Welcome to Diffuse Congruence. This is episode 60 of the American Muslim Experience. My name is Zaki Hassan, and I am here in 2018 with Pervez Ahmed. Yes, 2018. We welcome it. Uh, Happy New Year's, everyone. Happy New Year, Zaki. How are you? I'm, I'm doing very well. How was your uh, extended holiday? Uneventful and relaxing, yeah. So, the, which is always nice. So, uh, you know, quick update for the for the listeners and fans. I've, uh, uh, as I think some of you know and remember, uh, I have been... Uh, I've been for the last couple of years working at uh, Talif Collective, uh, so I sort of transitioned away from corporate uh, into the nonprofit world, and now two years later, um, I have um, transitioned back to corporate. And uh, but I, I remain uh, active and committed with Talif as an organization, and, and I serve on the board. Uh, but I'm no longer employed there, so. Back to corporate life, man. Um, so uh, it's been about a little over a month, and uh, I'm excited to tell you the truth. So yeah, well, uh, yeah, yeah. Looking forward to welcoming the new year, and uh, it's good to good to be kind of um, you know uh, in, in the legal field again. So yeah. a ch- change of scenery isn't a bad thing. That's right. That's right. So. Um, uh, but yeah, so uh, speaking of change of scenery, I think uh, before we, uh, I think we're, we're really excited about the new show and, 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 uh, and revealing um, uh, a, a very candid interview that we had. So f- our first guest for the new year is, is a conversation we're very excited to share. And it's unfortunately a conversation I was not privileged to be there for. I happened to be sick the day that it happened. But this is the, the, the cool thing for me is that as as one of the hosts of the show, I, I don't get to experience it just as a listener. So this was the one opportunity I've had thus far to just be a Diffuse Congruence fan, which is pretty cool. And this is Pervez's conversation with... Imam Siraj Wahaj. So uh, very, very excited. Uh, and uh, obviously uh, someone that we've been wanting to talk to for a while now. So And, and yes, Zaki... Uh, I did miss having you there, and I think that uh, you would have probably, um, or not probably, you would have certainly offer, uh, offered some insight and questions that I probably was remiss on. Uh, but, uh, you know, it was, for me, it was kind of like catching up with an old friend, an old advisor, uh, a confidant. I mean, you know, Imam Siraj and I go way back, and you can, for, for those who listen to the show, you can, I think, I, I, I hope that's pretty uh pretty clear in terms of our sort of history. Um, you know, I was very fortunate to have Imam Siraj uh, marry me and my wife. And so certainly someone who has both a um, intimate connection and a personal connection to me. So uh, very excited. And uh, yes, we did miss you, Zaki. But um, uh, I, we hope that the listeners do enjoy the conversation and uh, we'll take it from here. All right. Well, here I am. I'm sitting here with uh, Imam Siraj Wahaj. Um, Usually at this point we'll do like a biography, but I think for not only many of our listeners, but for uh, myself especially, uh, I, Imam Siraj is a person who doesn't need an introduction. Um, you know, Zaki of course couldn't be here because he's under the weather, but uh, I am honored to be sitting across from the man who I consider to be a legend, uh, Imam Siraj Wahaj. Thank you so much, Imam Siraj, for joining us. Salaam alaikum, it's my absolute uh, pleasure. And I'm thankful to Allah, the Almighty, and I say this, you know, it's it's difficult, um, you know, trying to be humble without trying to be humble. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's but, right. But I am, you know, thankful to Allah that I've made some, by, by Allah's mercy, made some contributions to the Muslims over these years. That's right. I'm just thankful. Um, and I know that Allah doesn't need any of us. He doesn't need me. Mm. Um, so I thank him for giving me the opportunity to 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 make some small contribution to the ummah. Mm, mm. You know, it, it, it amazes me. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sitting here with, with, with going back and forth between my reading glasses and, and just looking at you. And, and, and I, I think I've known you for 25 plus yep, years. Exactly. Uh, in fact, it was funny when I was um, trying to get access to you again uh, to reconnect. Uh, I still remembered the old Masjid Taqwa number. Really? And I dialed it, and then I got into a loop of, of, of leaving messages. But uh, then, you know, uh, past guest of the show, uh, common friend, uh, Imam Zaid, was, was, right. was kind enough to connect us to. So thank you, Imam Zaid. But uh, yeah, yeah well, Imam well, Siraj me, and I me, go me, way, way back. Let me tell you something that's interesting, yeah. something you said. Yeah. You know, you remember the old number. I asked all my friends, 
years ago. Before. I mean, I could say it. It's, it's public uh, information. No, no. It's 718 622 0800. Exactly. Right. Well, so because <laughs> I you. call that number probably a million times in my life. Really? Yeah. Because, I mean, you yeah. remember. Yeah, I mean, but, anyway, sorry. But let me yeah. tell you something interesting. Yeah. I saw my friends yeah. before the cell phones. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how many phone numbers did you memorize? Okay. The average one said like 40 or 50. Okay. But now, how many do you know? Yeah. One or two. One or two. You know, which is that's so right. when you said that, that's when you right. said that, I said, wow. And that's one of the few numbers that I also know. <laughs> <laughs> it's remarkable. My daughter now, she's 14, she has a cell phone. It's programmed in my, in my cell phone, but I couldn't tell you what the number of is. Course. But again, your number or Majitukwa's number is just because it's from that era where yeah. we had to memorize phone numbers. But, and, and, you know, and, and, and I would call that number so many times trying to get a hold of you for a speaking engagement or what have you. Uh, this is way back in the Houston days, right? Well, let me tell you something yes. else. Yes, sir. I was, I was in an in the airport uh-huh. and I, I bought something, magazines or whatever. Uh-huh. And so, you know, now they have... You know, By the way, the best Imam Siraj stories for those who maybe or don't know this always deal with Imam Siraj in an airport. And at the airport. Well, right? that's probably because you probably spend 70 to seventy percent of your life in an airport. I don't know about 70 percent. <laughs> I don't, want, I don't want to get you in trouble. I don't want to get you in trouble at home. It's a significant but, yeah. time, that's right? right? That's right. Sorry. So, so uh-huh. now, they, you know, they have it like, so they, 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 the, the um, machine that they use tell you what, what, what change to give. Okay. You know, so it broke. This guy couldn't figure out, he couldn't figure out what was, I had to tell him. I said, you know, this what you just subtracted. <laughs> <laughs> because people are used to these these, these gadgets. That's and right. Like that's that. right. They it's can't. like they say, you know, it, 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 have have the smartphones in fact made us smarter, have they made us dumber? <laughs> right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because we, uh, yeah. So the, these these gadgets now, yeah, for, have, have robbed people of the ability to think, mm, mm. to remember. That's right. To simply depend on these gadgets. That's right. So we, you know, alhamdulillah, so we, we were dragged in the 21st century. Yes. Well, it's funny you say gadgets because I remember you as a speaker, public figure, imam, you know, you were one of the first people I remember, one, you know, airport stories of Imam Siraj, but also anyone who knows Imam Siraj knows, knows Imam Siraj in his books. Right. But I remember you used to carry around like, you know, um, like encyclopedias yes. and and, yes. and and farmers almanac information, yes. Yes. you had that all in gadgets back in the nineties. I, I, I did. mean, now of course it's on your fingertips. I mean, of you course. can Wikipedia or Google anything. Absolutely. But uh, so you you embraced technology early on. I did. I mean, you weren't but, but the technology. Thing, you weren't a luddite, as no, they no. say. No, but the, but the funny thing yeah. about it, by is any that means, I was one yeah. of the last ones to get a cell phone. Okay, that's, I, I, I believe that. People I believe try, that. I don't know why I resisted. I have yeah. no idea. Ask me why. I can't. I can't no. tell you. Yeah. But I just resisted. That's I right. was the last one. Even two people bought me cell phones. I never. I didn't. I never used it. And then when once I got it, yeah. I said, "How did I do without it? <laughs> it doesn't make sense." Especially people know me how often my car used to break down. Oh yeah, right. That's another. But if I had a, yeah, if I had a cell phone, and let me there tell you, you something. Let me tell you something interesting. The best car that I ever got in my life. Some brothers from Flint, Michigan, some Muslims from Flint, Michigan called me once. Mm. Said, Imam Siraj, you know, we, the brothers from Flint, Michigan have a car for you. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like a joke. And they were like, oh, I said, oh, that's cute, right? Yeah. They called me on the phone. They uh-huh. called me again. So one of the imams in Flint, Michigan, um, Imam Malik, uh, Imam Malik. Yeah. I called them. I said, Imam, these brothers from Flint, they said, they said Imam, it's true. Him and his wife drove that car to Toyota, uh-huh. drove that car to New York, to me, to Master the Taqwa, I, I, put, I flew them back on the plane to go back, and I drove that car, the best car I ever had in my life. Why they give me the car? They told me, ma'am, you know, at those times we had those little cassette tapes, right? Well, we're, we're going to get there. Yeah, we're going to get, get to the cassette Imam, we were tired of hearing you say in your speech, I was driving in so-and-so's, my car broke down. <laughs> I was in, my car broke down. So they got me an out car, the so best I car I ever had in my life. That's right. How blessed. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Things like that. That's right. You know, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. And um, that, I still got that same car. Remarkable. Yeah. Remarkable. So, Imam Sir, so as I was saying, I've known you 25 plus years. Uh, for those who've listened to the show, probably heard me say this. You know, I had the, uh, the honor, the privilege, whatever you want to call it, Imam Siraj married. 
Right. Me and my wife, 21, going on 21 I years. I remember the outfit you wore, by the way. <laughs> Luckily, I, this is I, audio only, so I you can... I wish <laughs> I can somehow get to your audience some pictures of that. Of that. I, I think I still have them. You probably yeah. do. <laughs> yes, sir. So Imam Siraj, yeah, I was, uh, it was it, it, so for those listening, I mean, picture the most traditional sort of Hadrabadi wedding you could imagine <laughs> with the crowd as equally traditional right, Hadrabadi. Right. And here is Imam Siraj Wahaj, Imam from, you know, from a mosque in Brooklyn, New York, performing the nikah. It was, it, it was beautiful. It was, it was, it was Islam in America yeah, yeah, in yeah, a way, absolutely. in a way, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, okay. So we've talked a lot about sort of the history or whatever but I'd like to even you know as I often like to do on the show is you know take it back further right as as well as I know you or as as long as I've known you I should say what I don't know remarkably enough is your your your, your story where where you're from um, how you came to the faith I don't even know that um, you know you you were born I, I've, I've heard you say this in, in talks but I think your original, your name is Jeff, Je- Jeffrey. Je- Je- Jeff Jeffrey. Yeah. So take us back. I mean, tell us a little bit about the origin story of Imam Siraj Wahaj. Interesting. Let me tell you about my mother. My mother okay. and father um, divorced when we were young. Mm. I remember I was living on Clarkson Avenue. I was, I think I was five. My brother was six. How many siblings? Just me and my brother. Okay. So my, I'm five. My brother six. Well, I'm six, and my brother seven. I think that's it. Mm. And um, <clears throat> and. We were in the kitchen, and my father said to us that me and your mother are going to divorce. Who you want to stay with? Now, me and my brother, it's not even a choice. We're going to stay with our mother. Yeah. I mean, it's not, even, it's not even close. Right. So we both said my mother. So we wound up staying, staying with her. Um, and she, I was a Christian, Baptist. Yeah. Made us go to church every Sunday. Um, and, and I remember. Um, are you a New York native? New York, born in New York, okay. born in, in uh, it's been first five years of my life, Fort Green Projects. Um, Which is in, in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah, this is very close to, really. Are they a, still there now? A, They've been gentrified. It's, it's, no, it's, you, yeah. it's, it's being gentrified, but it's still there. So literally, if we took like 20 steps, we, would go on the, we can go on the Manhattan Bridge. That's, what we, that's the part we lived in. Um, and then at one point, that's the first years of my life. At one point, I was seven years old, was in the Marcy Projects. One Sunday morning, I'll never forget this, I, I, I was getting ready for church, and I said to my mother, how come we have to go to church anyway? Mm-hmm. And, which is a fair question, yeah. in my opinion. How old do you think you must have been? I'm seven years yeah. old. Seven years old. So my mother took out a strap, and she hit me a couple of times, then said, do you now understand? I said, yes, but I didn't. So 12 years later, I left the church and became a Muslim. Mm. How I became a Muslim? My mother was so beautiful that she was always concerned about our education. We went to public schools, no doubt. But my mother was never satisfied with sending us to any public school. She found what she thought was the best or better public school and sent us there. Mm. In those days, you had to go to the school of your neighborhood. That's right. So my mother would give her a different address of somebody in another right, neighborhood. Right, right, right. When I was at St. Mark's Avenue Elementary School, literally, there's a school on our block, maybe 30 yards from my, my um, where we lived, and she didn't let us go there. In fact, I went to go see her last week, and I was reminding her of that. I said, Mom, you always made sure we went to a good school. Mm-hmm. So we went to, we, we walked a long distance and went to another school, a better school. Junior high school, my mother took us to, again, not the school in the neighborhood, but Walt Whitman Junior High School, which was predominantly white. Okay. So we went to a inter- so-called integrated school. It was on a basketball team. Yeah. Um, and then I went high school basketball junior high school That's first true. okay yeah and then I went to high school and became the captain of the basketball team high school music and art most people don't know I used to be an artist you don't have to date yourself but are we talking the 1960s You're 1970s talking about 60, mm-hmm. okay. talking about um, 68 I believe okay something like that I was in high school music and art in that school you either you know you was known for your art okay or music. Or music. Right, but it's an academic school. Mm-hmm. Across the street from City College, by the mm. way. Um, and I remember, let me tell you my, what happened, the consciousness of Islam came. Um, 
my 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 hero at that time was Martin Luther King Jr. Remember, I'm a Christian. That's right. Baptist, just right. like him, right? right? Followed him and his whole thing, the liberation of, of black people. One night, um, 1968, I'm playing basketball at St. John's um, Recreational Center. And while we were playing basketball, um, the loudspeaker came on and announced that Martin Luther King Jr. was been assassinated. Mm -hmm. April I, 1968. Uh, yeah, yeah, April 1968. And I went home crying. I was hurt. And I remember saying, that's it. You know, I'm going to either become a black Muslim or a black panther. Mm. So I would get the I would get the newspapers from both the Black Panthers and the Black Muslims. Why that reaction to his assassination? I think, think because you know um, he was a man who was doing it the right way. I thought nonviolently, yeah. um, that whole kind of thing. Oh, yeah. um, and just the same thing I think Linda was mentioning. Here's a man who who did it the right way, right. and he was killed. So what what you know, yeah. you know Malcolm had already been killed, right now on him. And so kind of disillusioned, yeah. disillusioned with the church, right. disillusioned with white people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, as a freshman, I, uh, I joined the Nation of Islam. You were a freshman at St. John's? At, no, no, oh. at uh, New York University. Oh, New York University. So were you playing St. On John's a, yeah. um, Recreational Center. That's right, right, I right. I, I just thought you played basketball for St. John's. I no, no, heard of I, that. I played uh, basketball for New York University. Okay. Yeah, okay. shooting guard, right? By the way, I'm six feet tall. That's right. The average, I don't know if you know anything about basketball. The average point guard. You forget I come like, from Houston. I, I know. I, <laughs> I, like point fact, guards. Sir, I have been privileged enough to share the court with you and Dr. Jackson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you remember yeah, shooting yeah, that side of that? I absolutely remember. <laughs> Dr. Jackson he, talked a lot he, of mess. He talked smack. He, he talked a lot of feel. He just talked. Now, because that's my shake, I think you, you may have videoed it. I, I, I don't do. Know if you did, right? I do. I have video of it. So I didn't want to show nobody because he's my he's my sheikh. I love him. I don't want, you know, what I'm saying. He's but you like, were dropping oh. shots left and right. I'll be honest. <laughs> you had that outside shot. You still had it. Now, now it's different now yeah. with what I did to um, Imam Suhaib Webb. Oh, is that right? Oh yeah, man. Oh. Because he had the audacity to challenge me. Right. We were at an ICNA conference in Hartford, Connecticut. I never forget this. It made three, four years ago. Mm. And he, you know, they were playing the Shabab, the youngsters yeah. was playing basketball. He's a big, he's a big guy. He's yeah, big what, six, guy. six, oh. two, maybe six. No, no, no. Oh, he's no. Like six, six. Oh, man. oh okay. Okay. About so ten hundred, about a thousand pounds, man. Big guy, man. So, big guy. That's right. So he said, so he challenged me like midnight. Uh -huh. like, we're going to play basketball. Yeah. So I came. No Suhaib Webb. <laughs> So, right, one o'clock in the morning, I say, he ain't coming. He ain't showing mm -hmm. up. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about Let me tell you what happened, though, what, how, it, how it got to yeah. that. Sure. Brothers came to me and said, Imam Siraj, so, hey, Webb, every time he gives a talk, he begins saying what he's going to do to Imam Siraj in the basketball court. Oh, so, what they did, what they did, they said, okay, they taped me. They taped me challenging. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And so, when his session came, they played that first. So he said, okay, we're going to meet me at one, you know, midnight. Right. So I'm ready to go back to my room, and here he come. To add insult to insult, he came with a Boston uh, Celtics Ooh. uniform on. Oh. That's disrespect. That is. I mean, come on. I'm from New York. That's right. New York Knicks. And you come, you know what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. So, so we played, right? Yeah. And they got it on film. So I'm not going to tell you exactly what I did to him, but I'll tell you this. When I finished with him, I had to make tawbah to Allah, ask Allah's forgiveness for what I did to, to the sheikh. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're, 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 we're like recording right now about, a, about maybe five miles from where he used to be, Imam, right? right? The MCA. So exactly. we're here at the Santa Clara Convention By the way, Center, I love him. Yeah, he I know, um, right. recently yeah. did Juma Khutbah at my masjid. He's in your, na he's in your neighborhood He's in now. my neighborhood He's now. at NYU. Uh, NYU. That's right, chaplain. Or where I went to school. That's right. Where I went to school. So your old place. stomping grounds. You know what I'm saying? That's so right. It's, 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 it's amazing. That's right. So, sorry, so, so I took happened, you away from so the yeah, so went, 19, so, yeah, so freshman year, you joined the nation. I joined the nation. I, I remember it was a Wednesday night. Okay. I remember wow. exactly what I wore. I was a, it was a brown pinstripe pin suit. Brown suit. I know that I, I can see the color of the shoes right now. It had a big afro. Came Wednesday night, 
And the minister there named Minister Arthur Fourteen X. He was the minister. Okay. And at the end of his sermon, he said, "How many would like to be Muslim?" And I said, "I did." So that day, the first the first day, Wednesday, I came back that Friday, two days later. Um, and believe it or not, they had this, this newspaper called Muhammad Speaks Newspapers. That's right. That night, my second day there, I took some of those papers to sell. I've never sold anything in my life. Afraid to death of sell, of selling something. Of sales. Uh-huh. So I took it. I, I remember the place I went on Eastern Parkway in Utica Avenue. And I remember I took a paper out and then somebody came by and I said, uh, you don't want one of these, do you? <laughs> he said, no. I said, okay. Shy. Yeah. Right? But then I went on to go sell later on a thousand papers a week. Wow. One of the top salesmen in, in you know in the nation. How much would they so, sell for back in those days? Twenty five cents. So what year is this, by the way? You embrace Islam in nineteen sixty nine. And so what happened? The interesting thing is, I never had a car. You're the I third. Won't. You know? Do you realize you're, you're either the third or fourth person who we've had on the show who embraced Islam in nineteen sixty nine? Really? Hassan Bagby. I'm going off memory here, right. so I'd have to go, you know, but the, list, the, the listeners can go back in here. Um, Hakeem Archuleta, and I want to say one more person, I can't remember who, but yeah, 1969 was some year. It was a year. Some year, mashallah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, could you got to remember. So, and, yeah. well, I, let me ask, when you joined the nation, though, um, as you said, it was a kind of a, you had that response, that visceral kind of reaction to Martin Luther King's assassination. How much did you had, did you know about Malcolm, or had you read his autobiography? Let me like, tell you something interesting. Malcolm was the man. Mm. I think after the death of King, I came into really black consciousness. Mm. I mean, really. I mean, um, love it to such a degree that I would go around quoting Malcolm. Back during slavery, there were two kinds of slaves. There was the field Negro and the house Negro. And my mother and father would tell you, my brother would tell you, that Malcolm, I got all the record albums of Malcolm, um, all the books written, you know, written about Malcolm. Mm. And so I, then, then he, I became in love with him. Crazy thing happened. When I joined the Nation of Islam, I learned from their perspective that Malcolm was a hypocrite. Mm. I went home one day, I'll never forget this. I left the mosque. He was seen as a Benedict Arnold kind of like a, yeah. a traitor yeah. to the cause. Oh, absolutely. There was a friend of mine named <clears throat> Reggie. I mean, that's probably putting him mildly. Putting him, yeah. Yeah. There was a, a friend of mine named Reggie. So now I know Reggie, they all knew me like I was like the black nationalist. Mm. Right? So I said, Reggie, you, you like Malcolm, don't you? He said, yeah. I gave him all my record albums. As much as I love Malcolm. So I had to kind of change because, because again, from the perspective of the nation of Islam, Malcolm left them. That's right. Right? Left, left Elijah Muhammad. And, um, okay. and so, and so, um, so now, now you're looking at um, 1975, something interesting happens in the nation of Islam. Elijah Muhammad dies. That's right, 1975, yeah. But he dies one day before our national, it's called Savior's Day. That's right, national. Meaning that all of us are on the way to Chicago for our, you know, he usually gives a speech and we all mm. come together. He had been ill, right? So he had been ill. Okay. <clears throat> but he was, he was expected to be there. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, well the rank and file, yeah. we didn't know. Right, right. Maybe the, maybe the leadership, they know, maybe, maybe. we didn't know, right? right? So now, so we, we hear the day before, they re, they're beginning to to um, to announce Elijah Muhammad is dead. As I know, my wife suggested said, "Why don't you go to the headquarters, which is on 116th Street, which today is now Mal- Ma- Ma- Masjid Malcolm Shabazz, right. named after Malcolm X." Yeah. How how things change. That's right. That's right. So um, and they said, "Why don't you go there and find out?" We went there, and they said, "Yes, he died." No, no. They said it was, no. That's the, they said it was a trick of the devil. Mm. So the next morning, we you know we got a, we can, we go into the airport. So we meet at the mosque in Brooklyn where I, where I was going, and that's when they told us he died. Right. So this, so 
the, 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 the very day that we're going for our national meeting gathering, on the way to the airport, they told us. I remember vividly on the plane, looking while I'm in the air, I'm looking down, waiting for the for the world to end. Wow. This is how you know. Right. Yeah. So, so the and, ingrained the theology yeah. was yes. of, of the nation. So, so the so the uh, so the the meeting is in Chicago. Where I sat that day was what's called front rostrum security. Okay. That is where the stage is. Yeah. I'm sitting down with hundreds of other brothers, right, on security, mm-hmm. listening to all the speakers. And then um, that's when the son of Elijah Muhammad, at that time, Wallace Dean Muhammad, mm. he spoke and we endorsed him as the leader. Okay. That same year, 1975, he gradually changed the theology to what we know as Islam today. Mm. He said his father was not a messenger because they taught that Elijah Muhammad was the messenger that's of right. God. That's right. They taught that Father Muhammad was God in person. He said, no. The, there's only one God that originated in the heavens and the earth. You know, by most accounts, uh, Fard Muhammad is buried here in Hayward, California. Some people say that. Yeah, some people say some that. People You've say heard that too. I've heard okay. it. Okay. I, I don't know how I... I right, right. I don't know either. But You know, yeah. Farrakhan would dispute that. By the okay. Way. I was going to ask you, so where does Minister Farrakhan rank in, in terms of the rank and file? Let me tell you something. In 1975. <laughs> Let me tell you something interesting. Yeah. 1975... Minister Farrakhan actually followed Wallace Muhammad for two and a half years. He was a Sunni Muslim. He taught Islam as we know it today. But uh, after two and a half years, um, a guy named Bernard Kush, Kushmir, Kushmir, he wrote a book, um, This Elijah Muhammad, This is the One, You Need Not Look for Another. He was the one that convinced Farrakhan to go back and resurrect the old nation of Islam. Mm. So, in maybe 1977, mm. Farrakhan, uh, Eli, um, Minister Farrakhan left That's Imam right. Walthali Muhammad and started raising the nation of Islam all over again. Okay. So, um, so what happened? Now, yeah. for the first time, I'm loving Islam for Islam. Okay. Under the leadership at that time uh, uh, yeah. of Imam Walthali Muhammad. Exactly. Now... How I mean, accounts vary, but maybe about four, five hundred. I mean, how many th- how many people left the nation with Imam Wadi Muhammad? You think? Are we talking oh, hundreds the, the, of thousands? Oh, the, the overwhelming majority. Yeah. At first, virtually everybody. Right. But after a while, when his teaching became clear, contradicting Elijah Muhammad, there was some resident <coughs> people. Yeah. Many people. Some people left. Yeah. Went back to the nation, or just back, left, maybe left. in general. Oh, period. Oh. It, it, this this left yeah. period, and it was Farrakhan who rebuilt the nation of Islam, mm. calling some of the old people, mm-hmm. and they started gathering together. And so mm-hmm. he developed, you know, this this a following. That's right. Now Imam Muhammad, um, may Allah bless him, for maybe one of the greatest mass conversions ever. Perhaps in the history of Islam, Absolutely. not just not, we're not talking Islam in America. Absolutely. History of Islam, and and it was something that um, very difficult. I appreciate it now more than I did then, mm. to because these people talking about being in the sect and to chant transform these folks. Let me tell you something. Be honest with you. I'm sitting there. Listening from speaker after speaker in Chicago at the okay. at the, at the uh, Savior's Day. Day, talking about you know Wallace and Muhammad. Yeah, we hadn't heard from Farrakhan yet. Now remember, I'm in New York. My minister is Farrakhan. Really? Okay. Yeah, he's the he's the minister he's the minister in, in Harlem. Okay. But he's the the whole city. Okay. In fact, he's the regional minister. Gotcha. Right. So I said to myself, and this is for the world to know now. I don't care what you say. I'm not going nowhere until I hear from Minister Farrakhan. That's what I'm saying to myself. Minister Farrakhan came on and said, I remember he was crying. He said, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was the will of Allah. And now Minister Wallace, Wallace, Wallace Muhammad is the, is the will of Allah. Once Farrakhan accepted him, then I accepted him. And a lot of people accepted him. So it's, 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 it's history. It's incredible that that moment there, such a defining moment, had Farrakhan left 
that day, I would have left him. Hmm. It's just the it's the it's the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wow. And I think most of us right. because we thought if something happened to Elijah Muhammad it would be Farrakhan because you gotta remember yeah. Imam Waratuddin Muhammad left his father. That's right. A number of times. That's right. Kicked out a number of times because he didn't accept the theology mm -hmm. of his father, Mr. Mm -hmm. Elijah Muhammad. That's right. So, so um, in Chicago, yeah, Chicago. because Imam Wadi Muhammad was in Chicago. Imam Wadi Muhammad right? actually was in Philadelphia. Okay, he okay. was in Minnesota, Philadelphia. Okay. So every once in a while he'd come back, yeah. you know, and yeah. then right before Elijah Muhammad died, he started coming back, mm. started going around mm -hmm. the country, and we noticed that he would give talks, sounding like he was some authority. We noticed that because he came to New York, he gave a, he gave a, a talk, right? And we had like we had our like special classes for the men on Saturdays, mm -hmm. and he said something like, um, and "As long as as long as Minister Farrakhan, you know, uh, accepts something like accepts, he'll be okay, something mm -hmm. like that." But he was talking like man of authority. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta remember, Farrakhan was the national spokesman for Elijah Muhammad, mm -hmm. so that like, he was the man. He was the voice of Elijah Muhammad. Yeah. Elijah Muhammad wasn't making no appearances. Was Ben Farrakhan? He was articulating the message of the nation. What Malcolm used to do. What Malcolm yeah. used to do. Right. So, um, um, and so what, 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 which is now Imam Muhammad did, is maybe the first week. Certainly not more than two weeks. He transformed, transferred, Ben Farrakhan from New York to Chicago. Mm. Took him from his base brought him close so he can watch him because yeah Farrakhan's a powerful man right he and people were loyal I was loyal to him right 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 people were loyal to him right so um and the rest is history they Farrakhan was in some some mosque in uh, mm. Chicago some small mosque yeah. maybe it was a little bit too much for him so let's bring it back to him to, to you then so you leave with Imam Warthi Muhammad. Yes. With that community. No, you see, you, yeah. you're using the, 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 young, the wrong word. Yeah. We didn't leave with him. Yeah. We stayed. In other words, okay. we, we, the, the, yeah. the, the, the rank and file stayed with him. In other words, yeah. we, we'd always follow leadership. So the leadership was now, Wallace is now in, you know, in charge. Okay. So basically everybody's there. Mm -hmm. Farrakhan left. Mm. I even left eventually, which is another story. Yeah. Well, we want to get to that. Okay. Yeah. We want to get to it now? Be sure. I mean, if, unless there's something else. You know, no, the, no, no, no. I that, think what happened. What begins to happen. Let me tell you what happens. Produces that kind of inertia. Yes. Yeah. What happened is that I began to be sold on the Quran. Loved the Quran. Loved Prophet Muhammad. Now, to, to, to his credit, I mean, you know, Allah Yarham, right? Imam Waradin, he introduced Arabic. That was not had not been used in, in, in the nation? Absolutely, absolutely. I've he, heard you on record, in fact, say that the first time you ever heard the Quran in the Arabic language was Imam Warthi Muhammad, is that correct? It is in his community. Okay. But I community. know right. who it was was Sheikh Jafar Idris from, from, wow. from, from uh, 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 Sudan. That's right. What Imam Muhammad did is that he got some African, um, some African leaders to help his Imams. Uh, one of them was Sheikh Rafai from Nigeria. Uh, uh, Sheikh uh, um, um, Idris from Sudan yeah. and, uh, Jaffer Idris Jaffer mm -hmm. Idris yeah. and the other brother from Sudan that uh, he put in Chicago he was in he was uh, in uh, Isna Adam El Sheikh? No Not Adam El Sheikh the other one you know him I, I think of him in a minute okay. so, so he put those people there mm -hmm. in New York uh, Abdul uh, Sheikh Jafar Idris was there. Mm. One day he had some of the Imams of Imam Muhammad mm. together, and he was reciting the Quran. I had the tape. It was the most. You can hear me saying at the end of his recitation some small verses from the back of the Quran, maybe 20, 20 chapters. Okay. You can hear me saying that's the most beautiful thing I ever heard in my life. I got to learn that. Mm. So I fell in love with the Quran. That was the first time we heard the Quran in Arabic, right? Mm. So what happened is that I got a reputation. I had a nickname. Imam Muhammad, his community was called the World Community of Islam in the West. Yeah. I had a reputation within his community. Imam Siraj Wahaj, 
the Sunni Muslim Imam in the world community of Islam in the West. Hmm. Because Imam Muhammad would even say publicly, yeah, Imam Siraj, you know, he has this inclination, he loves this, you know, he loves the Quran, he loves Muhammad. Hmm. So what happens, so now, Imam Muhammad, to his credit, is bringing us along slowly. Right. But now I'm studying. So now I'm studying and I'm saying, okay, but wait, Imam Muhammad is saying this, Allah and his messenger is saying that. Mm -hmm. So I actually, and I don't know if I want to say this publicly, but I wrote a 26-page letter to Imam Muhammad saying, but the, but, the, but, the imam, but the Imam, I noticed, you know, you yeah. said this, but, right. you know, not challenging, but make right. me understand. That's right. So at some point, uh, I remember there was a brother in our community. Um, now, obviously, when you were in the nation, you weren't Siraj Wahaj. No. What, what is that? Can, yeah, let me tell you what say, happened. Yeah. Um, again, my, I was in the nation of Islam, I was Jeffrey 12X, which meant that I was a 12th Jeffrey. That's your birth name? No. No. Sorry. Jeffrey Kiris. Kiris. Never heard name. this, okay. No. No. Really? No. Karis so in the nation of Islam, K E A R S A. What happens in the nation of Islam, what you do, depending upon uh, what city you live in. Huh. Like, so I would be the 12th Jeffrey in New York who joined the nation. So I was Jeffrey 12X Cares. <laughs> Malcolm was in Detroit. He was Malcolm never, X. Never knew that. Malcolm X Little. So that's how the name sounds. So the brother who came after me, Jeffrey. Jeffrey 13X, mm. Jeffrey 14X, mm -hmm. and their last name. Mm. So what happened, so when we came, um, and Imam Muhammad, we made the transition, mm -hmm. there was a guy among us um, who studied Arabic. Okay. And he said, you know, that's a good name I, 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 for, for you. Uh -huh. Saraj. It means light. That's right. So for a long time, I, I accepted I said, I like that. For a long time, I was just Saraj. Okay. Right, everybody called. Oh, they started calling me Siraj, right? Mm -hmm. And then he came. About four months later, he says he came. He came running. He said, "I saw your name in the Quran. Wajalna Siraj and Wahajin. We sent Siraj Wahaj. Yeah. That day, I became Siraj Wahaj. Mm -hmm. And then I changed it legally. Mm -hmm. So Siraj Wahaj and all my kids had. So for name. our listeners, what does Wahaj mean? Wahaj means it's an adjective. You know, in in the in the Arabic. They put the noun first and then the, and then right. the adjective, mm -hmm. right? So it means a bright light. That's right. Wahaj. Yeah. FFS, shining, bright, stuff like that. That's right. Um, so that's how I became Saraj Wahaj. Okay. So what happened yeah. is that what happened, so there's a brother in our community. He um, had a wife named Jamila. Okay. She couldn't have children. And he wanted desperately to have children, but he loved his wife. So him and her talked about him taking a second wife. Okay. In the nation of Islam, under Imam Muhammad, he told his followers, you can't do that. No, you know, polygamy. No polygamy. So, so the brother came to me and I said, let me, let me talk to the, to, the, to, the, to the Imam. I wrote Imam Muhammad a letter saying, Imam Muhammad, I understand, you know, what you said, but here's a case here. I know this brother, I know this family, and I'm recommending that he'd be able to take the second wife. Imam Muhammad didn't answer me. Three months went by, the brother came to me and said, Imam, I said, you know, he hasn't answered. Mm. So I performed it. Because you gotta remember now, I'm, it's the Quran, yeah. it's, 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 it's Quran, it's, I don't care who you are, it's Quran and Sunnah. That's right. This is now, this is in my heart. Mm -hmm. Love Prophet Muhammad, he, you know what I'm saying? So, Imam Muhammad is the one to put it in me. He's the one. That's that, right. That's right. But so now I'm, I'm serious about it, right? Right. So what happened, so I, I, I um, and I know people in the community found out about it. So I'm telling you what happened, what Sunni Muslims would do to me. I had this reputation. They knew, they said, oh man, this guy, Saraj Ahaj, he's, he's different from the guys, you know, yeah. in, that, in that community. Yeah. And they can hear it. So when I give a, a public talk, I gave a talk no different than what they give. But in the question and answer period, mm. they would ask me questions that I know that, I, that would contradict the Imam Muhammad. Mm. I would give the Islamic view mm -hmm. in contradiction to my, I wouldn't say Imam Muhammad was wrong. Yeah. I would say this is the Islamic position. Yeah, right. So some of his followers were like, yo man, what's yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I called Chicago headquarters and told um, Imam secretary, I want, to, I want to come to Chicago to meet with the Imam. And uh, the secretary said, uh, no, the imam is, is busy. I called back and said, let the imam know I'm coming to Chicago and I'm not leaving until I see him. 
This is 81, I think. Okay. Because you got to remember now, back up a little bit, 1978, <coughs> I went to this imam training. Oh, that happens in 78? That happens in 78. Okay, because in Mecca. In Mecca. Okay. T so yeah, tell us about that, because I know that had a... Big impact. Uh, in yeah, a big well, impact. Let me first you. say this. Please. 1978, during the month of Ramadan, Okay. 100 imams around the country was invited to Naperville, Illinois, for imam training, 40 days. Okay. I was one of the blessed 100 imams. Of the 100 imams... Five of them were chosen for continued study in Mecca. I was one of the five. Who was Big Fik? Big Fik <laughs> is Hussein Hamid. Triple H or something. Oh, right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, yeah. Hassan Hussein Hamid. Okay. He's still alive. Nice. In his 90s. Okay. They call him the grandfather finance, something like that. Something like that. He's well known okay. from Egypt. Okay, okay. In the alam, a scholar, uh, I mean, he taught us the meaning of. Of, of scholarship, mm. like for instance, we we ask a sheikh. We say sheikh. We ask him. In now, Islam. Was he in Naperville, or you, you meet him later? He was in Naperville okay. Okay. first. Okay. So some of the same teachers in Naperville, we would meet in Mecca. Okay. So of the hundred or so, you were selected among the five. I was the five. Yeah. Okay. And you were gonna go to now Mecca. Now we went to Mecca and spend a number of uh, months there. Uh, about about four months. Four months training. Yeah. So what happened? Like give you an example. Yeah. So we ask a sheikh a question. Yeah. And this is his typical answer. He said, well, we got, we got three opinions about that. Nice. He said, Ahmed ibn Hanbal, this is his position on that question, mm -hmm. and this is the evidence that he used from Quran and Hadith. Right. Imam Malik has a different position. This is his position, right? And uh, Imam Shafi had a third opinion. I think that this is the best opinion because of this. Mm -hmm. That's scholarship. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't just say, like some people, they say, oh, no, this yeah, is the answer. No, right, no. Yeah. You know, the, I, we, we, we understood and learned the depth of the Islam and Islam ain't just like, you know what I'm saying? That's it's, right. It's depth to That's it. That's right. So, so now, some of, the, some of the imams of Imam Muhammad, what they would do is they would challenge the sheikhs. Well, the imam said this, and I'm like, yo, man, to myself, be quiet, man. This, learn scholarship. Mm -hmm. Because now I'm like, I'm open now. I'm not just reading one thing anymore. Mm -hmm. See, that's what Elijah Muhammad did. We read his books. And that was it. Yeah. Now we're exposed to all the shuyuk, all the scholars. Mm -hmm. We're exposed to the Quran itself. That's now right. we're reading the Quran right. and hadith. You didn't want to go down that same trajectory. I said I'm yeah. not going to do that ever again before. Right. And so it wasn't personal. <clears throat> right. It's like, yo, man, this is, I want this Islam. I see, I, see, let me tell you what happened. I, I got to the point where, as an imam or imam Muhammad, I would prepare my khutbahs mm -hmm. from the Quran, from Hadith. And when I'm finished, now I'm saying, okay, where can I mention Imam Muhammad's name? You see what I'm saying? It got to yeah. be, yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that. Yeah. I don't want to do that more. I don't want, I want to be true to who I am. That This is now, this is me. Yeah. Right? So what happened? So 1981, I think it was, I called and said to, to the imam secretary that I'm coming to Chicago and I'm not leaving until I speak to the imam. He said, okay, come on. It was a Friday. I'll never forget. Imam Muhammad gave the khutbah. Mm. And afterwards he met, he met with me and he said, what is it? I said, imam, I'm going to thank you for all that you've done. You helped guide me to Islam. Um, but what happened is that there's some discord in your community and I'm at the root of it. Mm. He said, why? I said, because... I'm not teaching the teachings of Imam Wafid and Muhammad. I'm teaching the Quran as I understand. And I see things differently. And he said, like, for, for what? So I told him some of the things mm -hmm. different with, like, for instance, he had taught at that time that Jesus had a father. And I said, no, Imam, he, you know, I, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, so I want to resign as your Imam and as a member of your community. Both of them. Mm -hmm. He said to me, Imam Siraj, you can still be my Imam with these differences. And then I insisted. So Imam, how should I do it? Mm. He said, you know, you give your, you know, your, your farewell sermon and then you resign. I said, Imam, there are some people, because what happened, everything I learned in Mecca, mm -hmm. I taught when I got back. Mm. I didn't keep it for myself. Yeah. All those who came to my class wanted to leave with me. Right. 
And I wasn't trying, but see, I wasn't trying to undermine because that's why. In, in, in fact, another thing is, I never intended to open up a masjid. That's right. I was going to different masjids, mm -hmm. determining yeah. which masjid I'm going to go to. Right. I happened to go to a masjid in Harlem called MIB, Masjid of Islamic Brotherhood, Imam Taufik. I'm speaking to him one day after Juma. I said, you know, Imam, I'm not promising you on coming here because I'm going to different communities. I want to find out where I'm going to take my family. Mm. So for, for, for a few weeks, actually, I was going to different masjids for Juma and seeing where I felt comfortable. People saying, we want to leave with you. We're not, you know, for, I said, no, I'm not doing that. This imam told me, Imam Siraj, my recommendation to you, don't join any of us. He said, there are some unscrupulous imams out there. You don't know them. I know them. Mm. They know who you are. I don't know what he meant by that. It's something he saw in me. He said, don't even join me. Mm. He said, you go up with the people with you, okay. and another year you come back to these imams as an equal under none of us. That changed history. <sighs> Only is when he said that, mm -hmm. I said, okay. There was a brother in our community named Salim, Salim Abdul Sabor. The, those who came with me, about 25. We had the first Juma in his apartment. I never forget. We moved the furniture from his living room and did Juma prayer in his living room. That began Master the Taqwa. The administrative um, was in my house. I, I gave classes in my house. Okay. Juma in his apartment. In his apartment. One day I'm driving and I see this for sale sign on the building. The Long story short, yeah. that became Master the Taqwa. Corner of? Bedford Avenue on Fulton Street. I know that well. Yeah. You know that well. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, I think not only me, but I think. Everyone in, there's a, there's a whole uh, cadre of people in my generation that know that well. Just because it, Masjid Chakwa represents even for those of us who never had, had had ever been there, but because of your cassettes, and we'll get to that in, yeah, in just a second, is that it became this landmark uh, for us, Imam Siraj. And I, you know, and and you, going back to a point you made earlier, you know, I mean. You know, uh, how do you how do you speak of yourself without sounding yeah, like you're bragging right, 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 or whatever? Right. I'm gonna say things unabashedly. Uh, to quote Linda Sarsour, <laughs> yeah. unabashedly right, right, right. in terms of me being uh, a fan, a disciple, a student of uh, a person who I don't know where I where I would be if I had not came ha had I not come across those cassette tapes. So, so for me, you know, Mas Taqwa because it was Taqwa Productions right, right. and it was. Imam Siraj's khutbas at Masjid Taqwa. And I think, and, and it's funny because, you know, last week, or the last, no, two episodes ago, we had Omar Muzaffar on from Chicago. And Omar and I were, we, we were kind of geeking out, our own version of Muslim geek. We were geeking out about listening to cassette tapes of Imam Siraj Wahaj really? and what that meant to us, you know, in terms of our formidable... Uh, in terms of our sort of coming into uh, coming into Islam, as it were, or coming of age in Islam, right. as it were, having been born into the faith. So, um, anyway, sorry, going back. Well, so no, no, you, no, you no, saw no, that let sign. me say no, no. Okay, let please. me stay there for a second. I'll tell you something very interesting. I never produced um, cassette tapes. Okay. At first. Yeah. The same brother uh -huh. in his apartment, Abdul uh, um, Salim Abdul Sabor. Sabor. He said, Imam, can I, can, I, um, can I tape you? Yeah. I said, yeah, okay. And he would sell the tapes. Never gave me royalties or anything like that. He would sell the tapes. And what happened, people started complaining that they weren't getting the tapes. <laughs> Only then did I take it over. So, right. And, and so he it, came the under is yeah, the rest of history. The rest I mean, is it history. really, it, no, and I, I want to, I wanna, because that's not just a footnote. Because yeah. when we say the rest, of his, the rest is history, I mean, there was a generation of us who were in our teenage years who were fortunate enough to come across your speeches, um, either in, la in person at ISNA conventions or the like, or we got our hands on those cassettes. And we, 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 we binge heard, to use a modern <laughs> expression, we binge listened to those cassettes. I mean, I could, I could, I, I could sit here and I could, I could, I could what's the word, uh, just sound off titles going to the root, back to basics, um, 
you know, it's natural to be righteous. Uh, I mean, I, these these tapes, Imam Siraj, I mean, had, and I still have them sitting in a garage. I just don't have a, I don't, I don't have a cassette player anymore. <laughs> but I, I haven't, and I haven't done the diligence of of tra- of, tra- of uh, transferring them to digital, uh, which I want to do. I imagine that's probably. I hope that's something that's been done. I think, I think they have. Yeah, yeah they, have, they have. No, no, please, yeah. because if, if they have, I know, I know, I I, can, I know listeners, and I I don't want to name them. Because I don't want to shame them, but I mean, there are listeners on uh, listening to this podcast right now who would love to get their hands on digital on that digital content. Let me tell you something. Yes, interesting. Um, maybe the last five years, you know, you. I think one of my greatest blessings. I never looked at myself as anything big. A regular guy, mm. you know what I'm saying. Um, beginning about five years ago, everybody that I knew started telling me the impact. Yeah, I don't want to name no. the scholars and everybody. That, that's right. First, yeah, all of the well knowns. That's right. I didn't. I didn't know that. Right. Yeah. And then everywhere it seemed like for all of a sudden. Everybody's saying, you know, Imam, what you meant to blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and I think that Allah hid it from me mm. so that I would never get a big head. I didn't know. I, I had no idea. I'm talking about all over, the, like, the world. I'm talking about South Africa. I'm talking about, you know, uh, uh, London, England. and talking about Everywhere. And it's like all of a sudden everybody started telling me. And you're like, you know, you're like, you, don't, don't, you, you say, yeah, yeah, you don't really believe it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when people tell me about the cassettes and people, just like you're saying, oh, yeah. and, and like... Wow, subhanAllah. I'm, I'm telling you. It, it, yeah. you know, I'm saying you, you, ne- you never know. Yeah. You just never know. That's right. That's when I tell people today, and I see the youngsters, and I said, I tell them, you know, keep up the good work, and, um, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you because you have an impact um, on, on people. And there's not a city that I go to or event that I go to unless 20 people will come, 30 people, even tonight. Imam Siraj, you don't know. Yeah. You don't know. That's right. And I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I still don't... I know. I, you know I can saying? imagine. I can imagine. I like, I mean, I, yeah. Come on, man. Come yeah. on. I mean, and they're like, serious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, and I'm a nobody as well. But, I mean, I know, like you said, without even naming names, you know, a, right. a generation of scholars who you've inspired and... Uh, uh, and, 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 you know, and just people like me who are out there in the community, uh, lawyers, doctors... You, you know, you mentioned Flint, Michigan. Right. You know, um, buddies. Jawad Shah is there. Shah's my boy. You know, Amir is there. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. We, we grew up listening to you, so Imam Siraj. So, so here we are. Um, but, uh, sorry, so, so, so to, t- to take us back to Masjid Taqwa then. So now you, you, find a, you find a building, and you are now basically Imam of Masjid Taqwa. That remains... Tell you, t- tell you, yeah, still today. So to still to this day, you, at that location. At the same location. And yeah, let me tell you something. Sure. Uh, um, interesting note. Um, when I resigned, the day that I I left um, as the imam at um, at that time, Masjid Muhammad. Um, you know the date. It's the first of Ramadan. Okay. Fourth of July weekend. Fourth, okay. What year? You, 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 yeah. Eighty, maybe eighty-one. Okay. So you ain't get the connection. No, no. Independence Day. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I mean, of course. Sorry. <laughs> July fourth, nineteen eighty. Eighty-one. I think eighty-one. 80, 80. I think it's eighty-one. I thought this thought was interesting, and I think Ramadan began the next that night or the next day or that day. Mm. I just thought. You know what I'm saying? You can't plan it. You know what I'm saying? No, no. These are these are like cosmic forces. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. that's, that's my I point. I mean, metaphysical cosmic that's, forces. That's, in, that's what I'm saying. Uh, as we would say, providential. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and, and oh, by it's, the way, I, another thing I didn't say. I wasn't anxious to leave. Meaning that I was thinking about, because as I'm learning, growing, I asked these scholars, can I stay? They were divided. Some say you should stay. Some say mm-hmm. you should leave. Mm-hmm. Because again, I, I, I now 
appreciate Imam Muhammad more because he had to do it the way he had to do it. Yeah. You know, everybody wasn't as um, enthused as I was. Let me tell you something. My first Juma prayer that I gave in my masjid, this is, again, Masjid Muhammad, used to be number 7C. Okay. Because in, in New York, we had all these, uh, all these temples. Yeah. Temple 7A was where Farrakhan was. Mm. 7B was in Queens. 7C, where I was, was in Brooklyn. 7D was in the Bronx. And then we had got all the way up these satellites, all the way to like 7S or something like that. So New York was really big, right? Mm. Um, Why the 7 in New York? Was that Because like in the nation of Islam, Temple number one was Detroit. Temple number two was in Chicago. Okay. Number three was Milwaukee. Four. So we're moving east. Is well, that yeah, well, different? Oh, like yeah, four, diff four was Washington D.C. So oh, okay, four. right. So seven was mm -hmm. New York. Mm -hmm. That's how it just happened. Mm -hmm. Seven. Mm -hmm. But I was going somewhere. Yeah. I was going to tell you something yeah. about. Um, uh, you were given the first khutbah. Oh yeah, at, yeah, at your masjid. Seven C. or seven seat. Yeah. I never forget it. I gave the khutbah now because you know we never we didn't do Juma. Yeah. So it's my first Juma. Right. In the nation. Yeah. In the nation. This to me. Yeah. Under Imam Muhammad. So in the nation, we didn't do Juma. That's right. But now... I so now, after maybe two months into his ministry, I'm doing my first Juma. Mm -hmm. My congregation laughed at me. <laughs> it's new. It's different. Mm. I fumbled. I said to them, it's okay. You laugh now, one day you won't be laughing. I don't know why I said that. And so that began yeah. the khutbah right there. That's right. Right? So that's, that's 1975. Okay, 19, right. Wow. Yeah. Now, it's funny because we, we, we danced around 80, 81. I have to say, for me, the first time I had ever even heard of your name was you, a very young you, <laughs> Mm. in a suit and tie, three-piece, gray, beautiful suit, I have to say. I'm, I like suits, sorry. Because uh, we'll get to Imam Siraj and his, and his dress now, uh, you know, in a little bit, because anyone who knows Imam Siraj knows the very unique style of your clothing now. But anyway, a video, a uh, gray suit, uh, you moderated the debate between, I would say now the historical debate yes. between Sheikh Ahmed Didat and um, Jimmy Swagger. Yes. In Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, yes. Tell us about that. Like how that came to be, how you, as, a, as an imam at that time, right, already yes. in Brooklyn, yes. come to moderate that panel or moderate that discussion. I met an extraordinary man. Okay. Um, when was that, by the way? Am, am I right about when I say 80, 81? Think, or was it later? Um, you, you, it, it could have been. A little later, I Might would have been. say. Um, it could be even like eighty-four, 83, yeah, eighty-three, eighty-four, eighty-three, or something like that. We could Google it, but we won't. <laughs> we'll just leave it yeah, to yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, um, met Ahmed Didak. I think uh, could have been Chicago. Okay. Gave a talk. Okay. And I was really impressed. Mm. Met him again. He came to New York. He came to our masjid. I think gave a talk. So I got to know him. Um, then he came to my house for dinner, him and his brother, and he said, uh, Brother Imam, I'm going to be giving this, this, um, this debate, and I want you to moderate it. Hmm. It was him who told me to moderate it. Wow. And uh, I did it. We became friends. I did a couple of them. Okay. The famous oh. one is Jimmy Swag. Yeah, yeah. All right. right. And, and, and he really, it was Allah's... Qadr, Allah's plan, Allah's wisdom, Allah's mercy. He did an unbelievable job. It was so good. Jimmy Swagger didn't want him to release the tape. Wow. He tried to fight, so they, you know, they fought, and he gave the tapes. You know, he That's sent right. the tapes out. Um, another a story about Jimmy Swagger. <laughs> I, I remember. I, I can I can quote excerpts of that debate verbatim. Really? Yeah. Serious? Yeah, because I, I listened. Because so my so this is pre Imam Siraj cassette tapes. My uncle, you know, God bless him. Um, you know, he, he's alive and well. But my uncle, my maternal uncle in Saudi Arabia, 
um, you know, when I was a young man, probably, I must have been in elementary school, grade school, uh, he would send me these cassettes from Saudi Arabia um, of Ahmadidat speeches, the missionary menace, and, and <laughs> uh, you know, and all this. And so he was the one who sent me audio cassettes of that debate. It was, I think, like six audio cassettes, you know. And so I would listen to them. And, and Ahmadidat was, you know, in many ways, the first person to inspire in me yeah. the love of, 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 of Islam yes. and the love of the Quran and yes. the love of, the, you know, of, yeah, of our, of our faith tradition. Um, and so, you know, if we could for a moment, just to get your thoughts, um, there, there, there are people who say that his style, and again, God bless him, Allah yarham, you know, um, God, you know, Sheikh Hamadidat and the impact that he had on our community or just on the Muslim world in general, that that style of his, which was antagonistic, uh, you know, um, uh, was great for Muslims, but not great for conversion, not great for da'wah, as we say, I, I, propagation. And and and, we, and I and I and I this reason I the, even talk about this. this I mean, after all, he was love and respect yeah, him. Yeah. This is the debate me and him you kind of oh, have even yeah. back then. Yeah, um, his I, style. Yeah, I thought that. See, the he was good, like for the Muslims' point of view. He gonna beat. He gonna beat him down. So we we went there to hear him beat down. That's right. You, you know what I'm saying? And he inspired Muslims. He did. No, he did. He did. And he gave us a sense He's, of no. And and to be honest, I mean, and you have to understand. I mean, a lot of it has to do with his of course, background. Of course. And, Growing and, up in South Africa. And where he grew up, being yeah, beaten the down by missionaries. Exactly. Christian missionaries. Exactly right. So I give him. I give him. I give him a pass. Like Dr. Jamal Badi is different. Yeah, of he's you know real yeah. nice, accommodating, yeah, right. and you know that right. kind of thing. Right. But he did. But to his credit, yeah. there are a number of people did take shahada. Okay. And Ahmed did that. Okay. So some of that okay. because sometimes what happens, you go to root for your guy. Right. So the Christians went there to root for their guy, mm-hmm. and the Muslims went there to root for their guys. So. What I also appreciated about Ahmed did that, and 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 uh, I, I'll say that people who are com- you know, and I don't want to name names, but let's just say people who profess to be students of his right. or disciples of his don't do this enough. Um, and because, and, and to their followers then, you know, it becomes a different story, is that to his credit, Sheikh, you know, Ahmadidah never claimed to be a scholar of Islam. Absolutely. He says, look, this is what exactly. I do. Exactly. I can quote you chapter and verse from the Bible. Yeah. And I can prove, you know, I, I can prove that Christian theology doesn't work based on its own sources. Right, right, right. Not even based on what the Quran gotcha, says. Gotcha. That was his sort of. That's yeah, to, again. I mean, no disrespect. Incredible. But that, that's no, his shtick. No. That, that, yeah, that's yeah, what he was right, great. Right, 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 but he right. never claimed to be a scholar. Right. You ask him a question on you know fiqh jurisprudence. Yeah, no, yeah, no, uh, no, that's not me. No, no. And I wish that you know again yeah, yeah. without naming names, but no, there are right, people right. who claim to be a, a you know a, a, a disciple or they continue that legacy of that approach. Right. They don't do that enough, and yeah, yeah. to their follower, to his followers, or to their followers, they become this grand sheikh, right. who's the expert on Islam. Of course, yeah, not, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So yeah. anyway, yeah, exactly. going back, yeah, Ahmed. So you you agree? You 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 had these debates or conversations yeah, no, with him? No, no, but you would. Yeah. Like you yeah. said, you would go to those lectures, and you you would feel pumped up. It's it was inspiring. It was. Of um, course. It gave you confidence in Islam. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And he was great for that. Wonderful. The best. So I got to know him, yeah. and 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 uh, he one thing he loved and he despised, he loved strong Muslims. So he had a real yeah. love in his you know in his African American Muslims, yeah. Yeah. Nation of Islam, right? You know, kind of be, because of the strength. That's right. And then he didn't like weak. That's right. Milly mouth uh-huh. Muslims, you know, right. that kind of thing. And, and he did. I mean, he inspired us to have a, pr- a sense of pride yes. in our tradition Absolutely. and in our faith. So, I mean, definitely give credit for that. So that's how, okay, so we took that little detour. So that's how you came involved in that debate. Um, so now let's go back. So let's go back to Majid Taqwa then. So now you're giving these, you, you know, obviously your khutbah tapes now become uh, the stuff of legend. Um, you know, you start, when do you kind of emerge on the national scene, and how does that happen? I know, I know when to begin. Yeah. Okay, I used to love going to ISNA conferences. Okay, um, as an attendee, okay. not as a speaker. One day I went there, and someone said to them, "I'm trying to remember that I, we can almost find out the date because that's the time, basically, when when um, 
Cat Stevens became Muslim. Mm. So we figured out that around that time, so okay. he started coming to the ISNA conferences. Someone told somebody from ISNA that this guy, Imam Siraj, you know, he, maybe he can have something to offer, give a talk or something. Okay. So I remember that year, they threw me in, in the session uh, with um, Cat Stevens, um, Yusuf Islam. Yusuf, Yusuf Islam. Islam. So I was, you know, he was the headliner. Okay. So, you know, you know, you know Siraj Wahad, you know. I was this guy, right? Yeah. And I remember my talk. And I remember after my talk, about 18 people came on stage and said, give me your contact. That's where it began. Okay. So people started inviting so me. So this would have to be years after he embraced Islam. So yeah, yeah, this could be yeah, even yeah. as late as the yeah, maybe something 80s, like, something, something like, like that. Yeah, it's in the 80s. Definitely maybe the Isna 80s. in Kansas City or something like that. One of those you, places. One of those places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's, that's how okay. it began. That's how it began. So what happens, so you go to one place. This is to give an example. Yeah. Um, I, told, I, I text my wife this the other day. I said, listen, man, this is my dilemma. I go to Jacksonville, Florida yeah. last Friday. I give the Jumma Khutbah. Yeah. Evening program. That's right. Four different people, four That's different right. organiz- That's organizations. Right. By the time you end one trip, you have invitations to five. So this particular trip, three cities, twelve invitations. I went from Jacksonville, Florida, then I went to Boston, Massachusetts, and then I went to Chicago. In those three cities, day after day after day, I had twelve different invitations. That's how it happens. That's how it happens. So you go to one place. Oh man. Right? Can we? Can you come to our city? That's right. So that's how it happened. That's right. And you know, and and, and you're sitting across from someone who is who, who's been guilty on numerous occasions of pulling <laughs> you away, pulling you away from New York. And that's why I had that phone number memorized because it was like, we got to get Imam Siraj to come to Houston for this event. It has to happen, otherwise the event isn't going to happen. And we've done some, you know, I was very fortunate and honored to to be part of some, you know, amazing we, events that we did. Yeah. With you, with Dr. Jackson, Absolutely. I mean, you, yeah, so that's how, yeah, you got to know, I think, not only people, not only me, but I mean, there's, you know, you talk about Jawad, you talk about Amr Iqbal, you talk about Kamran Bajwa, I mean, we I, all, I, this generation came to know of you through that kind of interaction. I remember, we, we, we the, the, every year, the Muslims in Winnipeg would do a, 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 like a conference, not a conference, a, a camp. It was a camp. Right? It was a retreat. It was in the summer. Like, yeah, in the summer, right? So it happens that me and my teacher, uh, Sheikh Jafar Idris, yes. went at the same time. You know, we did three days. Maybe it was like two weeks, and he speak would do like three days. So yeah. me and him did three days. It was so powerful. We never forget this. The day that we left, both him and I cried because we had gotten so attached to the group. We lived with them for three days, three, four days, yeah. right? And uh, and we fell in love with them. That's right. I think they used to be called Dawa Academy something, or something like that. Something. I'll yeah. tell you a story. So you, I don't even know if you know the, or, the, the this kind of... Again, you talk about how these things kind of germinate and come to be. 1997, that Winnipeg retreat, I, I was unable to attend, but a very dear friend of mine... Um, one of the, like the group we had in Houston, Muslim support group that we invited you a number of times, there was a young brother who was always working with me named Ammar, Ammar Ansari. Anyway, Ammar attended that year. It was you, it was Sheikh Jafar, it was Mukhtar Maghrawi, some speakers from uh, Pakistan had come, uh, Jawad was there, Amir Iqbal, all these cats. Three brothers who attended that, uh, no, two of the brothers who attended that cohort in, in the summer of 1997 in Winnipeg, were, sp- were so inspired by what had occurred over the course of the three weeks or whatever right. w- that, that, that they would spend there, that they went back to their community in Michigan and they started Alam, the American no Learning way. Institute for Muslims. They start no way. Yusuf High and Yusuf Kashif High. Siddiqui. Yes. Those two brothers for sure. I, I hope I'm not forgetting anyone else, but I know those two were for sure attended. They went back to their community and they said, look, we have Dr. Jackson, who's a professor at, at, at University of Michigan. Right. We have Imam Munir Farid, Dr. Right. Munir Farid. Exactly. We have Sheikh, you know, uh, Sheikh Ali Suleiman, who's yeah. the Imam of our own mosque right, right here exactly. in MCWS, uh, Canton. Why, why can't we do what is happening in I Winnipeg? Didn't know that, do it man. every summer. And so the Alim program wow. that is now in its 25th Sometimes, year, yeah. something like that, 
started from that 1997 Winnipeg retreat that you just happened to man. reference. It's unbelievable, man. You see what I'm saying? You don't know. Yeah. You don't know. You don't know. That's right. Just do the work, man. That's right. Well, it's like those, you know, you talked about Jamal Bedoui. It's that generation. It's Ahmed Sucker. It's Jamal that, Bedoui. That, it's the right. Barzinji. Meeting at that, meeting as young MSA students and starting an MSA at University of Illinois that that organization would now become ISNA would give birth to MENA and countless other organizations. Um, I mean, right? So, yeah, it all begins with that se- with that sort of sapling, with that seedling. So, By the way, I'm giving you five minutes. Yes, exactly. I was just about to say, we're, people don't know, we're recording at the literally the midnight hour. Um, midnight so, for, for what? For, sorry, Pacific time. Oh, so for Imam you. Siraj, thank is you. is 3 a.m. right now. Thank you. And he's on his way to Austin in about six Couple hours. hours yes. yes, sir. Yes. So... Um, what, what, I mean, it's like I know I, I knew where to begin, but I don't know where to end. <laughs> and there is no ending we because can, we, uh, can, we can continue. We're recording. I want to also say so. We're recording at the twenty third, at the eve of the or the night of night after the the twenty third uh, care banquet, annual third banquet right. uh, care banquet here in the Bay Area. You were one of the guest speakers, headliners, uh, Linda Sarsour. Um, and uh, Ilham, uh, Ilham. Representative Ilham from um, Minneapolis. So a, a record crowd, about 1,300 people. Mashallah, they raised over $300,000 yes. uh, through you being sort of the keynote fundraiser. Um, but I want to talk about that because I know this was a conversation we had off mic. Because again, I think that for, there was a generation of us for, that, that you represented, and I, and I use this expression, and so pardon me for using it, but I'll tell you why I use that expression. <laughs> you were Isna prime time. Okay, and you know you represented that old guard of Isna prime time. Uh, you and Dr. Jamal Badawi and Muzammal Siddiqui and Ahmed Sucker, uh, God bless him, Allah yarham. And, and then that generation then sort of passes the baton, and then you have the Sheikh Hamzas right. and the Imam Zaids, right. and now you've got Yasser Qadi yes. and whoever else is taking right. the Isna prime time. Um, you're just as busy though. Absolutely. And you're still Isna prime time without being Isna prime right, time. Right, 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 right. But talk about, if you will, the sort of how what you've seen in terms of the change of the Muslim discourse and how the community has evolved with regards to its thought leadership and its, you know, the people who occupy, quote unquote, Isna prime time, if you could. I don't know if that's a vague question, but, you know, you mentioned Imam Suhaib, for example, right? And, you know, Hey, we, we were two episodes ago. We talked about him, and I'm not trying to say this is in any any context or related to anyone we've mentioned. But Noman Ali Khan, once right, right? Sure. So I'm not here to, for you to comment on Noman Ali Khan necessarily, but just, <laughs> right, right. But just for you to kind of I, talk I'm about how very, you've seen in your own eyes. I'm very pleased with the level of knowledge of the generations that's come after us. Okay. They are studious, right? Extremely articulate. Um, um, and so in that way, I'm happy. I, I think that uh, Muawiyah was right. He said, La hakima illa du tajiba. There's no real wisdom without experience. So coupled with the experience, they'll get it. They'll get more, more, more experience um, um, and continue to do a good job. I, I'm very supportive of them. Very love them. Uh, very supportive of them. Um, and hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to bless them and continue to mature uh, into, into the Islamic work. But in terms of scholarship, and um, another one, uh, Ab- Abdul Nasser Jangur, yeah. love him. Dallas. Yeah, in Dallas. That's right. Love him. Mm. Um, Column Institute. Uh, I was blessed to be there. Their speaker at their graduation two years ago, and to my surprise, they named the scholarship after me. Wow. That every year they give a scholarship to someone to go to that institution to study under my name, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Um, so I'm very pleased. Yeah. Very pleased. There's, there's no lack of knowledge. Okay. So, right. so you see, in terms of where the community and, and some of our thought leadership. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I always thought that, you know, when you study, I, I love sports. I always love sports. I, yeah. like, I like baseball, I like football, I like basketball. 
And and one of the one of the great teams that they're always trying to get a team. You don't want a team that's too old, right? Mm-hmm. But then you don't want to, you don't fresh green a, a, a team with just youngsters. That's right. That was like that nice mixture. Yeah. You know, you got you got the old guard there, and I think like one of the teams like I don't know if you study basketball, San Antonio. Mm-hmm. That's right. Was one of those teams. Oh, yeah. You got the old guys, yeah. right? And, you know, and then you had the Duncans, yeah. and then finally he had Robinson, That's and then right. D- Duncan, and then now you got um, Leonard. What's his name? What's that guy named? Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I know yeah, you're talking. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, so that combination. Likewise, for our Uma, you you Uma, you want the young, the youth to come, mm-hmm. take their place, mm-hmm. but you want some of the seasoned veterans there to kind of you know kind of right. help. You know, guide them along the way. That's right. That's right. I think again, and, and, and I'm not going to keep you. So, last thing to close out, because we'd be remiss to have you on the show and not talk about this. But, you know, kind of where you also emerge on the national scene, and I mean by national, I mean you know, in terms of national American scene, is the work that your community, that Majitakwa and the community is able to do in that community in that right. neighborhood. Um, in, in fact, being recognized by Mayor Dinkins of the time, maybe yeah. even later Mayor, Mayor Giuliani. Yes. Who, 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 right, Dinkins. Yes. Right? He comes after Dinkins. Dinkins right? comes, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he comes after so, Dinkins. So, regardless of where Giuliani later, <laughs> I know. where he goes later. Exactly. <laughs> but at that time, we're talking nice. So, tell us a little bit about the work that you did in that community uh, of, in, the thing, in Brooklyn. I think the thing that, that you will find out about us, we were very active. We were activists. Um, and I, I didn't I I didn't think it was strange to participate in all the issues of the society, Wonderful. like especially when oppressed black people. We were there. That's we right. would march with them. Even the other Muslims would say, "Why are you Why That's are you right. doing that?" But we did it. And also, you know, I'm sorry. You mentioned something today. You know that that people forget. And again, I think there's probably some listeners of ours who forget that there was a time in our community's history where we talked about the validity of voting and absolutely. talked about basic civic. Basic, what we, what yeah, we yeah. considered to be basic, basic civic involvement, absolutely, was being questioned. Yes, from a theological, right. religious perspective. Absol- absolutely. And we've come so far now. <laughs> yeah. You know, I almost want to say, in some cases, almost, you know, because where do we, what do we embrace? What right, we right, right, right. But, but you, but. To, to, so for you to say that, I mean, people may, be, may, may not appreciate right. the fact that, yeah, now you hear it and you say, okay, that's okay. a given. Of course. But 20 years ago, it was, it was not, not a given. It was not a given at all. In fact, ostracized. you talking about you're going to vote. What? Right. You're going to vote? Right. So that's what I'm saying. We've grown. And cleaning up the streets in terms of ridding it of drugs and prostitution and the kinds of things that were occurring in your neighborhood. That was a regular thing for us. That's this right. was, and an, 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 like I'm saying, everybody talked about it. I'm saying when we closed down those drug houses, I'm saying every major newspaper in the world was there and covered it front page. That's right. I'm talking about France, Germany, Turkey. That, I mean, we were interviewed by everybody. You were inundated with like requests, media requests. Unbelievable, yeah. nonstop. Not, that's right. Not, nonstop. That's right. That's a, that's if you think that's a big thing. I mean, thing. to the point. I mean, let's be real. Also, another. I think a, a you know, it's a it's a historical moment. You opened Congress. Yep. With the Fatah, or with the, 19, with the prayer. 1993. And that was right. I think was... that the people have to, have to appreciate this point. That okay. The session of Congress never opens except by a Jewish rabbi or Christian minister, historically. That's right. Until 1993, when the imam was the first imam to open up a session of Congress. That was you. Let me tell you how big it was. it was. And I found this out later, that in Mecca, they covered it. Like every 15 minutes, it was so big. Imam in America opens up session of Congress. That's right. So big was it. The next day, remember the 700 Club? Of course. Pat Robinson. Well, he's still around, right? Pat, yes, still around. Pat Robinson said. Oh, Kajer, still around. Did you hear that a Muslim opened up a session of Congress yesterday? The next thing, they're going to let witches do it. Wow. That's how big it was. They know it was a big thing. That was, they, that was major. That was. That's no, that was no light thing, you know? That was major. Are you kidding me? Muslim opened up a session of Congress, and then Imam Muhammad later on opened up Senate. After me and him, but they've done state, um, city. That's right. And, and stuff like that. That's right, that's right. Um, 
Yeah, so um, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, man. And um, may Allah bless you and your family. And you keep up doing the great work you're doing, man. You're just incredible. Still, man, still, still Muslim. It's still, still Muslim. kicking it. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. And, and, and in the trenches, as it were. Exactly. In the trenches. So thank you so much. You, uh, yeah. This was a beautiful moment for us, for the history of our podcast, to have you on the show. And uh, may God bless you and the work that you're doing. And uh, you. safe travels as always. Thank you so much, man. You take care of yourself, man. Be good, man. Well, thank you so much, uh, Imam Siraj, and thank you, Pervez, for, for conducting that fascinating interview. It was a real joy to listen to, and I'm confident that the people in our audience will enjoy it as well. And, uh, you know, we do have some, some listener letters that have accrued over, over the past several weeks. I thought this is a good opportunity, as any, to, to share some of them with our listeners and also offer a chance to respond. So um, why don't we start with a letter here? This is from uh, Idris Watts, who has written to us before, and he is uh, writing in reference to episode 57 featuring uh, our guest Omar Muzaffar who was talking about some of the, the sexual abuse scandals that have uh, rocked the Muslim community in, in recent weeks and months. And uh, this is uh, from uh, his letter and, and he, he gave a very lengthy commentary which we're very, great, great, very grateful for. I'm going to try to pare it down a little bit. Uh, he says, I wish to commend you three on the latest episode. This was a very brave but important message that you delivered. I've seen these issues arise in our own communities and in the light of the explosive accusations being directed in all spectrums of society and the various communities around the world, we have to take this very seriously and find some practical solutions. And he offers four steps. He says, number one, talk more openly about how secret marriages are simple simply not acceptable in our modern age. Uh, number two, empower potential victims. They need to be taught the signs of how they can be taken advantage of when facing this behavior from anyone in public position of authority. And the more we talk about it and make people aware, the greater uh, likelihood it can be prevented. He also says any religious leader should have access to counseling and therapy. And this is an important one, actually. I, yeah, I mean, that that's something we don't really think about. Mm -hmm. is is offering uh, people in a position of leadership in our own community uh, an avenue to uh, deal with the fact that they are uh, not perfect, you know, which is sort of the expectation, the, the, the wrong expectation that's placed upon them by many people. Absolutely. Uh, and then uh, number four, he says, we have to admit that our scholars are not the recourse for all our needs, and we have to be aware when we are projecting hero worship on them uh, and the dangers of it. So kind of what I just said. So uh, he goes into it uh, with a little bit more length, and we'll, we'll, we'll uh, paste his, his entire uh, commentary on, on the Facebook page so that you can see it. But uh, uh, thank you so much, Idris, for, for those comments. They're, they're on point, and we appreciate you. Uh, uh, expressing them through the vehicle of our show. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, he writes this from across the pond. So, I mean, you know, I, I think his insight uh, as someone who is, um, you know, a, a scholar in the, in, the, uh, in the Muslim community in England and in, in Great Britain, I think certainly is uh, insightful. Um, and uh, thank you uh, for, ch for, for, for uh, not only listening, but providing the commentary that you did. And I couldn't agree with you more in terms of uh, the, the, uh, the need for having those kind of conversations and certainly, you know, diffuse congruence in the podcast is one small piece of that, but we're very happy to, we're very fortunate and honored that we were uh, able to, uh, to be a part of the discourse uh, about a, a, a very important and critical issue. Um, having said that, I think, I think something that we did mention in the past and, um, you know, I would want to reiterate here and certainly one of my, uh, uh, resolutions for 2018, as it were, uh, Zucky, and Zucky, you and I have talked about this, is to have more um, input and guests, or I'm sorry, I should say, we, to have more guests and input from uh, our female, you know, from our sisters, uh, from um, Muslim women in the community. And I think certainly on the topic uh, that we had Omar to talk, uh, that we had Omar on the show to talk about, uh, whether it's secret mar marriages, um, you know, um, polygamous relationships, abusive relationships, spiritual abuse, so on, uh, I think it's very critical to have a Muslim female voice, and you know, it's one of our intentions to do so. Um, and it's not by, it ha it, it, you know, it's just our, our lack of ability to do that hasn't been by um, design, but rather just, um, you know, trying Scheduling. to confirm. Exactly, scheduling. Um, 
And I think uh, finally, I think Idris makes also a very good point about the need for, um, and, and again, something that you raised, Zaki, as well, is our scholars are not perfect. They're, they're imperfect human beings, such, such as we all are. And, and uh, we are in need of pastoral care, uh, and they're in need of self-care. And so, you know, I think there are um, organizations that are providing those kind of, uh, of services. Um, a little shameless plug here. I mean, one of the programs that Talif Collective does is uh, uh, something called Refining the Core, uh, which is in fact specifically geared uh, at providing kind of a workshop. Uh, it's an, it, it kind of a, I think it's a six day residency workshop here in Fremont um, and uh, in California where we, ha we invite, you know, people who are involved in the community, whether they're imams or teachers or educators or certainly counselors who are involved in community work to kind of come and work on self-care, right? And so sort of uh, their own sort of um, um, needs. And so that's uh, certainly one of, I think, several programs that are out there that afford uh, opportunities for scholars, uh, activists, um, and, you know, counselors alike to come and, um, you know, get some, uh, get some training in that regard. Nice, and uh, I think we have one more letter, Professor. Uh, yes, sir. So we have a letter. We have uh, we have James Coulter. Uh, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, Coulter, um, mm -hmm. who reached out to us on Facebook. No, no said, relation to Anne, I'm assuming. Uh, I'm I'm assuming as Th well. That would make uh, Thanksgiving dinner very awkward. <laughs> Well, there was no vitriol and, and, and vindictive in the email or in the, in the notes, so I'm assuming there is no relationship. Um, and he says, Salam, uh, just a quick note. Um, uh, this is a comment related to the episode with Dawood Yassin. Uh, best one yet, please have him on again. Uh, not that the others were somehow lacking in any way. So too, a few guests ago, um, and he's speaking about uh, Dr. Abdul Al Sayed, uh, who was who was running for uh, Michigan? Um, uh, who was running for governor in Michigan? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and forgive me, I can't remember whom. Anyway, brought up Trump and what dynamic, and and, and the dynamic that was there that led to his presidency. Um, I appreciated his perspective, to which I agreed 100. percent It was great to hear an objective opinion outside of the ty typical assumption that all Trump voters are mere idiots or racists. Uh, love the show. May God continue to bless you guys. Um, well, thank you, and uh, thank you so much, James, for listening and for providing feedback. Please do continue to engage us. I know you do reach out to us on Facebook and uh, uh, and do comment on that as well. And so we always appreciate all forms of feedback, whether it's uh, uh, email or uh, via Facebook or, uh, I guess, tweeting us, right, Zucky? So where can people find us on those various social media platforms? Well, you can uh, hit like on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash diffusecongruence. You can also email us at diffusecongruence at gmail.com. And if you're looking for us, uh, I, you can find me at my website, zuckyscorner.com. That's the A-K-I-S corner. That's also my Twitter. That's also my Instagram. And Pervez, I believe you also have a Twitter. That's right. You can um, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Pervez F Ahmed A H M E D Pervez F Ahmed, and so feel free to reach out there. And um, you know, uh, like I said, it's um, I am resolute this year as far as bringing consistent shows and programming. And so we hope that you continue to uh, listen. And we're really excited going into our what fourth year yeah. uh, of doing the show. So. Uh, Bismillah, beginning the new year, man. Zaki, looking forward to uh, continuing partnership with you. Yeah, likewise. And and uh, if you are enjoying what we're doing, please go to iTunes and leave a review. Leave a star rating. Every little bit helps. And with that, I'm going to bring this episode to a close. But we will be back soon for another episode of Diffuse Congruence. My name is Zaki Hassan. And on behalf of my co-host, Professor Ahmed, we'll catch you next time. <laughs>